What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video. Uh, today we're gonna touch on something that I saw in a lot of my YouTube comments, my TikTok comments, my DMs. Uh, that's another thing, if you guys have anything you want me to touch on or anything you want me to make a video on, just DM me or comment it, I'll, I'll make sure to get to it. Um, but today we're gonna talk about my AAU circuit story plus little tips I learned along the way. And I'm gonna give you those tips as we go through it, but. Uh, let's start back in high school when I was freshman year. Like I said, I was about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, played freshman, played a couple games freshman, and then I ended up swinging JV, didn't play any varsity at all, right? So after that season, you know, I had little local AU teams. Yeah, come play for us. Yeah, would you want to come play for us? This, this, and that, right? So I ended up showing my parents, you know, some of these costs, some of these costs. And, you know, they were they were a little steep. Right. So we made a decision, you know, as a family, what we're going to do is and I recommend this to you guys. Um, I worked out that entire summer, didn't play a game in the AAU. And this is the summer. What? After my freshman year, going into my sophomore year, I didn't play any AAU, didn't play a single, a single game over that summer. Worked out. I was working out with uh, Rolando Lamb, Jeremy Lamb's dad all summer. Of course, you know, there are people mad at me. Oh, no, you need to be playing. What are you doing? Like, you're not getting any better doing that. You need to be getting game experience. But, you know, we just blocked out the noise, kept working. So this is what I want to This is my tip number one. And this might ruffle a couple feathers, but I, okay. So if you are good, like good, bro, you should not be paying for AAU. Do you think that the top players in UIBL, Adidas, Under Armour, do you think they, they're paying? to play at that level in front of those coaches? No, they're not. I'm here to tell you they're not. I didn't pay. By the time I got to that level, I wasn't paying a dime to play, right? So now I'm not saying now if you're playing under a coach that you trust, that's not an unsponsored team that you trust that will get you in front of those coaches, get you that exposure, by all means, pay for that. But you have to vet that coach because I know a lot of coaches and I've seen a lot of coaches you know, you're they're collecting all these fees, but you're not playing in front of anybody. So what are you really getting out of it? You know what I'm saying? You're basically just losing money. Now you're getting the game experience, but no one's watching. What are we doing? You know what I'm saying? So let's move on to into. So I get back sophomore year. I start starting on varsity a little bit. I did, you know, semi decent. But after that, after that uh, year, my high school coach come up to me. He's like, yeah, um. I got this little tryout at this high school I want you to go to for this AAU team. Didn't tell me the name of it. Didn't tell me anything else. So I didn't know what I was walking into, right? I actually told a story in the other video. I walk in the gym that day and I see kids like just dunking coast to coast. I'm like, where am I at? Like, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Am I trying out for the, for a pro team or something like that, right? Nope. This was a, this was a, this was a AAU team, a really good one, right? So I get through the workout. They said, uh, the director comes up to me, hey, you know, what's your name? This, this, and that. We want you to be on our team for this upcoming year. I'm like, okay, you know, what's the name? What are we? Game Elite. This is, you know, Jalen Brown's Game Elite. You know, the Game Elite that's, you know, pretty popular now. So I get on that team, and this was the, the first time I've ever been exposed to high-level basketball. Like, I remember, I think one of our first or second practices, I get to the gym, and they got, we get like crazy gear, like three, four pair of shoes. And this is cost free. I didn't pay a dime, just showed up three, four pair of shoes. I'm talking about casual shoes and hooping shoes. Like it's really like that. That's why I'm saying if you're willing to block out all that noise and just work out and get as good as you can be. And then you get on that circuit, you won't have to pay. And I promise you it's a, it's a, it's a way better experience, right? So I ended up getting to get on the team. We go through that summer. I'm playing in Dallas, Indianapolis, Vegas, right? So, and I'm playing, we have some pretty high level players on the team by then. Uh, I think one player already had like three, four stars. So we had at least 10 coaches at like every game. And this is my sophomore going into my junior year summer. So I get home from Vegas because, you know, it's now it's the time where college coaches can call juniors. So I keep 
I'm not going to lie. I'm looking at my phone. I'm almost on my phone every hour on the hour. Just like, why isn't my phone ringing? Why isn't my phone ringing? My phone finally rings. And it's a school. It's a college all the way out there. I ain't going to say their name all the way out there. Right. But they're calling me on some trying to see. Yeah. If you talk to anybody else. And this is another thing like we can really go into it because I, I, pre I pretty much have a good uh, feel for how this game works. So in recruiting, a lot of the time it's monkey see, monkey do with coaches. So let's just say I'm in the conference and this other school just offered this one kid. Now I'm like, does he know something? I don't. Let me offer this kid. This is why we got a lot of kids committing to schools who really don't really understand their games. They just offer them because, you know, they want to keep up with the Joneses. They want to offer them because, oh, that that rival school in our conference offered them, which, you know, it kind of sets the kid up a failure. But that's not a here nor there. Let's get back into the story. But, you know, they called me. They, you know, they weren't really talking about anything. So I ended up going back to the AAU director, AAU director, and I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to quit after one, after one one session one summer on there and i'm like i didn't play it in front of all of these coaches i feel like i played pretty well i'm getting no i'm getting no interest you know what i'm saying so i i go up to him I, I bring all my stuff back i'm like yeah man like i don't think this is for me this this and that he tells me this verbatim he says we need you like we really need you you're going to be the anchor of a rolls royce team the next year that's exactly what he told me exactly what he told me so I'm like, okay, okay, I guess I'll listen. Tip number two, keep working. Don't get discouraged if you get no interest right away. It took me an entire year on the circuit to even get more than one phone call. And I thought I was playing pretty well. So keep working. Like, don't, don't let it discourage you. Keep working. He said Rolls Royce team, right? So all of a sudden, this is my junior summer going into my, um, Senior year, well, not summer, you know, live period starts in what, April. So I'm playing or I'm starting to, and then all of a sudden we got this kid shows up. Um, I'm pretty sure y'all know him now, but Zion. So Zion shows up and we're like, and I swear, like no one knew who this kid is because this is when he's like 15 at the time playing up 17s. So we're like, bro, who is this kid? Because he's scoring like crazy easily. Tip number three. Tip number three. Um, this is why I kind of harp on playing on the circuit. Make sure the team you're playing on has high-level talent on it. Because I didn't have any offers, no stars, no one knew who I was, this, this, and that. But guess what? When I had, when he got on our team, bro, when I tell you we had at least 30 coaches at every single game. And I'm talking about Kentucky, Duke, like all the all the big schools. In fact, let me tell you this. Um, one high major school, I'm not gonna say what high major school, but they um they talked to my dad and they're like, Yeah, we came to see Zion, but we left we left saying we want your son, like we want him, we want him. That's you know, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, bro, I didn't have any offers, no anything going into that that AAU season, right? I leave that season with 17 offers. 17. And here's the catch. I got hurt um, in June. So I didn't even get to play in the July session. I didn't even get to go to Vegas. And I had a bunch of high majors coming to see me. And I already had 17 offers already before I even got hurt. So... Now, I'm not trying to put playing on a circuit on a pedestal because, as we all know, talent rise, rises to the top. It doesn't matter where you are. You know, John Morant didn't play, you know, on the circuit. Um, LaMelo didn't play on the circuit, you know, things like that. But you got to look at it this way. With Ja, he didn't play on the circuit, but he also, when he came out of high school, he had a little rougher path because there weren't enough eyes on him. So it's kind of it's kind of up to you um, if you really – really want to get that exposure and you know iron sharpens iron make sure you're playing against the top talent that's what i'm saying it, in my opinion i believe you should be working out until you get good enough to play on the circuit so that way you don't have to pay focus on hooping and killing everybody out there and making sure you're on that stage and making sure you live up to that right 
And now, I know a lot of kids were asking me, like, how? Like, how do I get on these teams? How do I contact these teams? Um, in your city, like, uh, if you're in the basketball community, someone knows someone. So I just try and talk to people this, this, and that. Now, like I said, you have to be good enough because, you know, this is this is real. Like, this is real basketball. So you can't, you can't, you know, go there and then, you know, try out and then be like wasting these people's time. You know what I'm saying? Because then they might not give you a second opportunity. That's what I'm saying. Make sure when you do approach these teams, your game is solid. Your game is solid and you can compete on that level. Cause like I said, you don't wanna, you don't wanna waste their time. Um, we're gonna, I got more questions about, you know, the recruiting process and things like that. I got a lot of experience on, on that because once I did start getting, you know, Coaches calling my phone. It's funny. My parents actually took my phone from me before I went to school because I had coaches calling my phone so much and they didn't want distractions. So I got I got stories of how to deal with that, how to navigate the recruiting process, and all of those are coming soon. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and comment for whatever videos you guys want to see next. Tap in on my next video.